hello all and good evening everyone so i am karthik and i would like to welcome you all today on behalf of gdg cloud andavad organizing team i know that uh, these are some unprecedented times and some of you might be struggling to catch up with your work personal life and other stuff but we are all in this together and this too shall pass i believe that uh, you all must be really excited to explore what is amp and how you can use amp to build faster websites so let's not keep all of you awaited and bring aman on board to share his thoughts about amp so yeah over to you aman thank you so much for karthik uh, and uh, yeah just truly like right that these are unprecedented time and nobody imagined it i was just uh, a uh, dreaming yesterday what happens if you don't develop vaccine like it would be like 20 years in apocalypse or something like that but let's not go into that uh, you know uh, uh, kind of dilemma it's a uh, god's will whatever however long as he wants to keep us we will but our duty is uh, not to waste any time and like you know be productive be uh, much more reluctant and learning new things and uh, kind of you know always be inspiring and motivated with these things so uh with that uh, thank you everyone for joining today and uh, uh anything else karthik or should we get started yeah uh, we can start so i'll start uh, your screen sharing sure so cool the uh, today we are going to talk about amp and i don't know how many how many of you already know about amp and we'll be like discovering everything starting from why amp came and uh, why you need to learn amp and what's how we actually can do that so these why what how when everything we'll discover in today's session so let me give you a little bit about me uh, i'm aman and uh, i'm a founder and cto at twinbit uh, twinbit is a research company and we do a lot of uh, deal with a lot of technologies amp is one of them i also lead at uh, my own uh, like the uh, community that is mobileweb.dev and uh, we uh, work on mobile and web technologies in terms of spreading in information and uh, spreading knowledge and doing open source projects and also i am a member of amp accelerated mobile pages the one that we are going to talk about today and also open source initiative and uh, i'm actively like uh, involved in both of these things to like bring the fun of open source to all of you guys and you know uh, be healthy part of this community more than that like i regularly keep stuff updating on twitter medium linkedin even though i am not uh, pretty old in this i am pretty young in uh, doing all this and i am still learning and uh, apart from that i share my experiences on my blog which you can visit on amansharma.dev and if you have any problem related to career choice or uh, what you want to do as a startup entrepreneurship i am a huge fan of entrepreneurship so if you have anything related to that you can connect me and uh, i'll be really happy to help you out with that thing so with that Uh, let's get started with a theme that is amp so it's it's no uh, kind of surprise to us that internet today is the central hub for everything that we do right now uh, i am able to give you this session nobody could have imagined uh, like 20 10 years before even 10 years before that i would be able to do so people used to rely on things like books or uh, even recorded videos but live streaming and everything was not a thing that they actually anticipated but now everything is running on web right even starting from e-commerce anything that you imagine web has a solution to it even native apps are now going more towards web that is the concept that is progressive web apps and to deal with this problem people actually suffer a lot of issues and this is again not a new thing for uh, you but technically to term it people experience uh, experience problems in uh, loading their website uh imagine like if you're working on a web project i have never seen a, a website which is opening like in 1 second or 2 second especially in india when you have unstable connections and according to a google report uh if your 50% users are going to turn down from your site if it doesn't load within 3 seconds and average load speed in india is 7.8 seconds so that's a like huge statistics and when i got to know this uh, i think one year before i was like oh my god like why we are doing this we have so many good developers but we are not able to optimize it for speed still so this is one issue other problem is like when something is loading on your screen 
they, even after seven seconds, it start loading. There is nothing that a user can do. It he's just seeing a wide screen, just keeping all the layers one by one, one by one. There is nothing that they can do. So this leads to unresponsive pages. Uh, uh, recently, Google re announced a new metrics to uh, the, like kind of measure what is the first uh, responsiveness load time of a page, and that's a very important vital that uh, Google has launched. But still, a lot of web platforms like even React, Angular. They don't support something like you, the web page is responsive as soon as person goes to the UI. This is the second issue. Then the third issue that uh, everybody of us has experienced that you are like uh, going on a website, we're doing something and it's loading. And why you wanted to, uh, why you wanted to click on a button or something, you actually hit the ad and it destroys the whole user experience, right? It, you have to again load the website to go back. Those accidental touches is something that really everybody here, uh, here hates right and by the way guys this is a two-way conversation i am really uh, kind of uh, i hate doing sessions like professors so if you have anything to say your comment box is open to you i am uh, looking at the live comments right now so you can reach back to me at any time like i'll be happy to entertain your comment over here so with this let's go to the next slide so you will say okay what is app is this a new framework or a new javascript framework that you have to learn you just learned another framework uh, one day back that, that was maybe Angular or React. And now I'm saying like, okay, let's learn a new framework to you know do and solve all those problems. You will be like surprised to know actually this is the only way to do it. Uh, Karthik before the session was asking me, how should a person decide that what frameworks they have to learn? Like there are so many frameworks to available, but I would say actually, if you have to become a master chef, you need to know different Cooking style. You need to know Indian. You need to know Chinese. You need to know Asian, con contemporary, Mediterranean. All these kind of food you need to know. Then only you can become a master chef. So that's why for becoming a master developer or becoming a good developer, even in case of web, you need to know all these languages, which is good at doing particular things and not good at doing everything at once. So, for example, uh, like React is very good at doing routing and creating web apps that flow in fluid manner. But uh, it's not very good at loading in first page, or it's not good at SEO and things like that. So th those problems still persist with frameworks like React. So in order to overcome this, you need to go and learn something else. That's why we are here with AMP. So why AMP? And this is what makes it different. So listen to me very carefully when I explain this, because this is the most important part. If you understand this particular slide, then you are ready to go and learn the whole AMP in within just one week. And talking about one week, we have a crash course coming uh, next week on mobileweb.dev. So make sure that if you want to learn AMP and want to get a certification, you can visit that platform. Uh, so I'll be sharing the link afterwards also. So that's not right. So why AMP? Basically, AMP is based on four main principles. Those are performance, accessibility, reliability, and responsive design. So whatever AMP has to offer, a single component, a single line of code, these are the four things that it makes, like keeps in mind, that the performance, every website should lo load in two seconds. This is the normal for AMP. Every website should load within two seconds. Second, it should be 100% accessible, not 99, not 99.1. It should be 100%. Then only your website can be AMP uh, validated or AMP 100% validated. Then reliability, even if you are uh, like using 2G, still it should open within two seconds or three seconds. And then responsive design. You don't need to make media queries to create a responsive design. AMP is the only platform that offers all these four things in just one go. But whenever you uh, do an AMP code, all these four things come together. So, and the can someone create a blog using AMP where they can publish ads to? Awesome, this is the best use of AMP. And I will cover this specific aspect, how, how you can use AMP ads to add ads to your publishing platform. So thank you, uh, Harishab. And uh, I'll, covering, I'll be covering that point in the later slides. And also it's really easy to learn. This one hour is like your zero to 10% learning AMP. And then the rest you can cover in our crash course. And then AMP can really help you in uh, doing pretty much everything. Everything is on web, and if you don't know app, app, you can do pretty much everything. So how AMP helps? So these are the four things that, uh, three things that AMP actually has to offer. 
One is AMP HTML, AMP JavaScript, and AMP Cache. So AMP HTML, to explain this thing, a normal HTML markup is like HTML tags. Then for images, you insert IMG, or for divs, you use divs and all those things, right? This is HTML markup. And if you are moving towards React or Angular, you will use a similar markup. For example, I'm a React developer also. Uh, so React uses something called as JSX uh, to when you are writing this markup to run your code. But AMP uses something that is called AMP HTML. So all the markups and uh, HTML that you have to write is the AMP syntax. AMP offers all these markups. You just need to replace your standard HTML markups into AMP HTML markups. Then there is something called as AMP JavaScript that you want to include any kind of dynamicity, you want to include a timer, you want to include a push button and doing this, blah, blah, blah. And so AMP has to offer AMP JavaScript, which can do everything that a normal JavaScript can do. And the last thing is AMP Cache. Uh, now, uh, generally, when you are trying to create an application that is, that is fast, you have to write the cache code yourself. But if you use all the AMP component, it performs the cache automatically for you. And this cache is responsible for loading instant Google web results when your AMP results appear on Google. And we'll be covering all these three parts. So why you actually need to change your HTML? Why you need to change your JavaScript in order to do AMP? Turns out when people are writing web code, like I'm writing a, a website, I'm creating a website. Everybody has a different style of writing code, right? And everybody doesn't know what are the best practices to, uh, you know, kind of create a better web application. That is why you need to learn AMP because AMP has a built-in best practices module. It's like uh, if, if I say you, you have to create a car, then everything has to be titanium. AMP is a titanium in this case. And ultimately you get a best car. This is not a perfect example, but you get my point, right? So that's why you have to go and go with AMP HTML and AMP JavaScript. That is actually ad, uh, like optimized for uh, you know best performance all the time. All those four metrics that we saw. So how does AMP actually improve web performance? AMP HTML, which is an extended form of uh, HTML tags that I explained to you. So the, these are the common features that a website use. Even still in 2020, we are relying on HTML in writing most of our website code. And these sometimes components are not that much easy. For example, a carousal only, if you create your own carousal, can take up to two seconds to uh, you know load on your website. And if you have 10 carousals, that means it's loading in 20 seconds if you are not implementing a parallel threading or a kind of parallel loading in that. Thing. So this is the first problem why you need to uh, use HTML. So second thing is JavaScript is fully restricted. You cannot use your own custom JavaScript if you are writing AMP code. Interesting, right? The reason to do this is because JavaScript is the main reason why your website is loading. Uh, there is something called as render blocking while your website is loading. If a JavaScript module is not loaded, then uh, your website is waiting for the JavaScript module to get loaded. And just because of that one JavaScript module, everything is stuck. So JavaScript has to like was found to be the main reason. That's why they restricted all JavaScript, but they provided a solution to it. And that was AMP components that everything that you need JavaScript for, we will offer you a component that can do the same job. Then there is something called as AMP validator that reports uh, like what if your page is 100% valid or not. So I will explain you what does AMP 100% valid means. And uh, that validator is responsible for making sure that your website is accessible and also having uh, optimized performance. And then if your website is 100% AMP valid, then uh, you can cache all these results on Google server, exactly Google servers, doesn't matter how much content you have on your platform. If your website is 100% AMP valid, it will be cached on Google server so that it loads instantly. And I will show you an example here in this session. So what do you actually need to know already if you are uh, trying to uh, work on AMP, uh, HTML? Now, uh, HTML is an eighth grade uh, subject, not a new thing. Then CSS, again, an eighth grade concept. And JavaScript, I can say it's like maybe 11th or 12th grade subject, so not an issue. But you don't need to know a lot of JavaScript, like threading and all those things. It's just simple plain JavaScript, how to implement JavaScript in your page. That's it. These are the three things that you need to know in order to get started with AMP. And we'll make yourself 10% eligible in calling yourself AMP developer. So starting your journey, this is the full fresh start of how you will actually start your AMP journey. So maybe if you want to make notes, you can make notes with me or uh, I will even uh, you know give out this video. This will be available for uh, later. 
uh, viewing and also I will release this uh, PPT for you so that you can use that and make fun projects with that. So the thing that we start with is uh, using this HTML tag. This is the first thing, right? Uh, so basically, if you are doing something else, you will write something like HTML doc type or something like that, or maybe just HTML. But to write a AMP HTML code, you have to use this bold image emoji, right? This is so cool, right? When you are writing your AMP code, you will use emojis. This is so, cool. so that's why you can use a AMP emoji. Or even if you are a boring person, you can still use AMP written in this text. And this way, any web framework or any validator will recognize that, okay, this website is a AMP page. This is the first thing that we have to do. And uh, so once you do this, everything will be done on cruise control. Like AMP will tell you what you need to write in order to make your code perfect, right? This is so amazing. You don't need to, for example, if you're converting your old website into AMP website and uh, you just know HTML and nothing else, there is a tool called as AMP validator, which will tell you one by one of on how you can actually uh, make your website 100% AMP valid. And that, that we'll see in today's session. So this is AMP validation. And, and AMP validation is important because if your website is 100% AMP valid, that means it is 100% scoring in all those four web vitals that we saw in the first slide. So uh, plus, if your website is AMP valid, it will cache all the results on Google servers. Plus, uh, uh, as we already talked about the third point that AMP rules represent best practice and accessibility performance and everything. So if you have uh, one one score that is 100% AMP valid score, uh, you get 100 scores in everything. It's like appearing for GRE and getting eligible for all exams. So that is how AMP validation actually works like. Amazing, right? So also the AMP validation errors are the key to learn what are the things that you need to change in order to make your website more faster and AMP. So for that, uh, you can download a Chrome extension that is called App Validator. And this is the hometown uh, for like doing everything that you have to do. When you visit a page, AMP Validator can detect if the page is valid AMP or not. And uh, it can also give you all the suggestions of what are the errors that your website has regarding the AMP. So just install the, this Chrome ex uh, like extension and it automatically detects pages and gives you errors, right? So easy. You don't need an ID or something. You just need your own Chrome extension and the Chrome installed, and then you are ready to go. You will see all these problems even on localhost, and uh, it will like give you all the suggestions. What you want to do. So then, in previewing your uh, site is easy. Just write your HTML markup, put it on uh, your Chrome browser. That's it. You don't need to do any kind of builds or runtime or anything like that. So that's how easy it is to preview your website. So then you can use the AMP validator extension that automatically gives you all the related reports, errors, and things like that. For example, you can see in this example, it tells you on line 30, column 8, the tag IMG may not only appear as descendant of tag non-script. Did, did you man, mean AMP IMG? So that actually means that IMG needs to be AMP IMG. So once you get started, you will learn what these errors are, and then you just need to go online, online, and then, you know, uh, you need to just follow the instruction that it's saying. So these are errors and warnings. To get 100% score, I think you need zero errors and up to three warnings are, uh, I think, acceptable. So that's uh, the requirement for uh, getting 100% AMP score. And then uh, you can go on AMP debugger. So uh, with every error that you which you saw in the last part, there is a debug button which you can click on, and then it will take you to another page that automatically gives you line by line instruction of what is wrong with this code for example img tag and it will tell you okay this is wrong with the img tag isn't it cool nobody does that right so app is like everything on cruise mode and you just need to make awesome website then the one that we were talking about amp cache so i hope many of you have already seen this results happening on google right whenever you search something you see a bold icon and this is this is like a, a plus on your web project, right? Once your website is running fast and smooth, it gets a bold icon. This means your uh, website is 100% performant. And what do you actually get with 100% performant? As soon as somebody clicks on this link, it will just open instantly, not even a one second delay. Let me show you an example. So let me go and open a new tab.
actually I want to open a normal tab because I have my extension installed over here. So let's uh, visit a uh, Google search like uh, I don't know many results, but and for that this AMP bold icon is only shown on uh, mobile browser. So that is why I will change my browser user agent to something like uh, uh, Android. So now it it is uh, acting like uh, Android mobile, and let's see what happens when I down uh, like search for something like future of telecoms in Asia, something like that. So you see, you have a bold icon next to this web result. So this is a page that we did for Twimbit, and uh, most of the website that you, you will see that are on top has this bold icon. And once I click this, it just open instantly. I'm not lying, my internet is not super fast. If you visit on your mobile, it will give you the same performance. And do you see the URL on top ahead? It says google.co.in slash app. This speed is because everything is cached on Google search engine. And that's why it's very important to have 100% score. But, and let's say, for example, I click on some other button, then it will take me back to my actual AMP website. And this is like how my actual AMP website actually looks like. And if I go to AMP validator, this is the AMP validator extension. And if I click on this, yeah, so right now I don't have any error. So that's why extension is showing green and I won't see any error at all. So this is the cool part. But if I go on some other website, like uh, uh, let's say, yeah, AMP.dev is also a good example. They obviously it's AMP. So uh, it, they will have an AMP supported website. So that's how you can, you can check how your website is AMP validated or not. Like, but let's visit a website that is not AMP. So you see it has AMP available access. It has a canonical AMP available access, but this website is not fully AMP. So this is the difference. Let's get back to the deck. So this is what will happen when you make 100% AMP valid website. It will get cached on Google search results and it will just open instantly. So the power of caching, uh, usually people use CDN to make their website available super fast on any platform and you have to pay for it, right? But if you develop website with AMP, you are getting CDN inbuilt your website application. Like it's, and the CDN is Google search. Imagine like how cool is it, right? So that's what is happening. For example, if your website is actually on the web server uh, hosted in uh, something like New York, which is I think the location over here. And if a person is accessing your website in a place like Australia, then it means it has to make so many hops in order to travel to this location. Uh, but Google has its servers in almost every continent and every country. And uh, instead of going it directly, the request is not going to that page. Instead, they are going uh, to that edge server, Google edge servers, and then it is showing the results, right? This is so cool, and that, that this is just done automatically as soon as your website is 100% app. So, with that, are you interested in like learning app, right? This, like, who can say no to all these glamour and all those uh, like angels that are dropping from this app thing, right? So, let's go ahead and get started with app. So instead of like doc, like doc type HTML, you have to use HTML and AMP syntax, or you can just write with HTML AMP this bold sign emoji, and this will help the browser to detect whether your website is AMP website or not. So next thing that we need to do is that we need to set up this boilerplate uh, kind of code in the head, which includes JavaScript main library uh, AMP main library that is also in async format, and also various other things like uh, no script in AMP boilerplate. This is a norm that you have to follow. And uh, this snip thing that it is saying, you can insert your own custom code. Like if you want to add some inline CSS, you can do that inside the style AMP boilerplate code. Or if you want to insert your own custom JavaScript, you can insert in no script mode in over here. And then you have to just add a canonical gradation to your AMP page if you are building an AMP website and a normal website at the same time. So this is where you have to insert the canonical link to the other website that search engine needs to know so that it doesn't duplicate the search results when your website is getting SEO optimized. After this, this is the body. It works exactly like how normal HTML works. In body, you write your own code, hello world, and that's it. It works like that. And uh, these are the things that I already discussed. 
the viewport this can be uh, customized so that there is no kind of uh, x or y horizontal ruler on your website you can add these kind of instructions to it and these are the am boilerplate codes so for example the css style that i was talking about uh, this is how you actually insert the css style you just add the style am boilerplate uh, syntax and add your own custom css in the normal fashion how you write your own css and uh, these uh, uh, this classes and ids that are visible they are actually offered by the amp components and we'll see about these uh, later in the next upcoming slides so uh, this is the amp script that we loaded and this is about css and amp so, so amp is amp css is actually loaded in style amp custom that i actually showed you in the last slide and there are some restrictions that you have to follow if you are using your own custom css in amp page most of the time you would need to use css because if you are making a boilerplate simple looking website like a white page website amp components already has those styling in them but still if you want to go with your own theme that your designer gave you or something that you need to customize you may need to add your own custom css that thing you will actually do inside the style amp custom tag inside the head and you can write your own inline css over there but the CSS should not be more than 50 KB. Exactly, if it uh, it's just exit 50.2 KB or something like that, then your web website is not AMP value. And you cannot use important tag. So many of you may not know, and this was a surprise to me also, that the main reason for render blocking CSS is because people use important. And they use important and hierarchy one like, more tags coming over and one another one new important to fix the old issue and ultimately the browser is confused oh my god i have to render so many css before actually getting to the real css so that's make your website slow that is why you cannot use a single important inside your css amp css that you make because it's an inline css if you don't repeat the class modules uh, where you are delivering your instruction you don't need to actually use important because this is the only declaration in your whole project for that particular class so and some css settings that use advanced things like transition or maybe marquee or bounce effect things like that are not allowed most of the css is allowed but few things are not allowed and uh, how would you know what are what is allowed or not your amp validator will tell you this it will actually tell you okay transition is not allowed. so this is much much easier to know kind of work. so this is another sample of how you can use AMP CSS, nothing different. You just add style AMP custom and insert your own custom CSS over here. And uh, now I will take you through a journey of how you can convert your own HTML page into an AMP page. Let's assume you create a hello world example, h1, h2, and all that HTML is available. Now what you will do actually to create an AMP page on it. So the first thing that we'll do is we will add all the boilerplate code that is needed. We will include the AMP library. We will include the boilerplate slide uh, styles. Uh, we will include the canonical links. Canonical links is also important. So we will also view, uh, add viewport meta tag and uh, things like that. So I haven't visited this link, but it says you can copy code from here. This is the boilerplate code. Yep, so you just need to copy paste and this is the most boilerplate code that you need to insert in your web project to get started with AMP. So after this, do we want full screen? Maybe not. So oh it automatically does. Cool. So and then you can start adding your own styles. And this is how easy it is to just go to that AMP or custom styles corner and add your own styles. So and after that, if you see any error. You just uh, need to, for example, in a console.log, you will see that this is powered by AMP HTML thing that automatically invokes if it detects it's an AMP page. And it will tell you what, uh, what is the problem that you can uh, solve, like to, to fix your problem. So these are the three steps that you need to do. So let's revisit them again. Firstly, add boilerplate code. Second, add your own custom styles. And third is uh, tech for all the validation errors that are mentioned. So these three things, and you are ready to go. Uh, so this says like uh, it's almost valid page. So this is again the last step. If you are not able to fix issues, just go with the validator flow and like, keep doing it until and unless you have all the well, uh, things fixed up in AMP. And uh, that that will give you a hundred percent AMP. But now what about things that we do? Things like adding your own YouTube embed inside a project. You cannot use iframes. 
right? Because that's not an AMP markup. You cannot use custom carousel. You can use, not use sidebar components. So AMP has a unique solution to address this problem that is called components, AMP components. So everything that you do on AMP, there is a component available for it. If you want to insert a share, there is a thing called as AMP share that you can insert. If you want to insert CSS, uh, sorry, uh, you want to insert image, you can do that. So this is uh, the way that you can develop AMP website by thinking inside components. And so for this, let's go with these three steps that we want to follow. So first of all, whenever you see an error, you need to find out what is the relevant way to fix it in form of component. So for example, if you embed a YouTube video or image carousal or social share links, these are the things that we will see in upcoming slides of how you can fix them. And there is a component for everything that you will imagine. Trust me guys, when I say this, you can imagine a single web capability and AMP has a component for that. And to do that, it's simply copy and paste and I will show you how you can do that. So what are web components? So it is a building block of whatever AMP work like. So what you do actually is uh, you insert the HTML markup for that AMP component, include that inside the JavaScript functionality. And when the website is running in an actual mode, AMP inflates everything on the run runtime without creating any build or without using an express server or anything. Just inserted, inserted a normal HTML syntax and AMP inflates everything for you. This is how actually web components work like. And if you want to check out uh, what are the different components available and all these things, by the way, all these components, when they list it on the AMP website, they all have 100% performance validity. So there is no chance if your website is using even 200 web components. When I say this, I'm like 100% confident. The 200 web components still will have 100% AMP validity and 100% performance uh, metrics in all those four performance metrics and vitals that we use. That is not possible with other web projects. If you keep on increasing the web page size, the website will go slow. But in AMP, it remains same because you are using AMP components. So let's go to this AMP component website. As you can see, when you visit the website, you have all these components which are listed in this unique fashion. And these dots that you see on the left side is the availability of these components on different formats. So AMP is currently available for websites. That are the AMP pages that we are discussing today. Then you have AMP stories, AMP ads. One of you asked, can we add ads? So AMP ads is the component for that. And then you have AMP emails, which in which you can add AMP to your emails. Email also slow, uh, loads slow sometimes. And uh, AMP email is the solution to that. So there is a component for all these things. So let's say, uh, and we will discover this in our example that we'll be covering. And uh, so let's get back to our slides. So these are the components that are available. And you can just go to app.dev slash documentation slash components to see all the components that are available. It's very nicely organized, regularly updated, uh, easy to follow instruction. Every component has instruction and all that. And you can see that in upcoming slides. So there are three types of components. One is called AMP built-in components, and one is called extended components, and third is experimental components. So built-in components are like the most crucial things that you have to insert inside your web work. For example, there is not a single website that I've seen in the world that doesn't has IMG tag in it because you want to insert image in a website, right? So there is a tag called as AMP IMG. You don't need to add anything extra. You can just add the boilerplate AMP HTML code, and then you can include uh, by the way, I'm getting a little bit sweaty. Let me decrease the temperature. Yeah. So, uh, where was I? So bad on this thing. Even my mom is giving arguments. Yeah. So, so for basic components like AMP, IMG, and things like that, you definitely use in your web project. You don't need to include anything extra. So those are built-in components. And then you have extended components, things like that are uh, used by many people, but not essentials, like uh, adding a Twitter box inside that, like you see in this example, or embedding a YouTube video. So for this, you can ex have extended AMP components and import these components inside your AMP website. And uh, then you have something called as experimental uh, components, uh, some things that are uh, like experimental, you already know, like. Uh, there is some things that is not ready for wide use, but still people can early adopt it. So these are the three types of components and adding them is really easy. So uh, built-in components, you know, you just need to include the boilerplate AMP code and you're ready to go. So for extended components, you need to add this script, which imports another script from AMP library. 
So for example, for including AMP Twitter, you just need to add script async AMP Twitter and include the uh, directory from where to load this uh, Twitter library, JavaScript library. And once it's inserted, that's it. That's what you want to do. So let's go ahead and see how we can create and add our first components. And let's start with our favorite that is uh, AMP IMG because people love images. That's why we build Instagram and all those shitty websites. And uh, to start with, AMP IMG is the best way to do it. So uh, what, what you could do, for example, inserting this beautiful looking yellow cycle image, what you, you will go for, look for a built-in component. Uh, for example, I will go to AMP website. Let's go and try to search AMP IMG if we are lucky. And by the way, guys, don't follow this bad practice that I do and search for it like this. I'm just showing off how many components AMP has. But for example, if you want to have images, you just go to AMP IMG. And then these are the instructions to include AMP IMG. You can just copy paste this boilerplate code, change the image that you want to add in, and that's it. So guys, exactly, that's it. that's what you have to do. You want to do that. And for example, if you don't know, you don't want to scroll down, right? So you can just simply go on your Google and you can search for, by the way, I'm still inside that mobbed user agent. Let me change back to normal. Okay. So AMP component uh, UQ. I don't know. I'm just a little over. So this is the first result, yeah, obviously, because AMP will be better at their own SEO. And uh, yeah, SEO is a good vital that actually AMP improves a lot. So just go to Google search for the component that you need. And the first thing that you will land is the component that you need to insert. So it will show you the boilerplate code that you need to insert, uh, tell you all the attributes that are available in order to insert it, and things like that. So pretty cool. This is what you will do with your yellow bicycle AMP image. You will add the boilerplate code. Then it automatically, this uh, an AMP has beautiful way of doing everything in every single component that you insert. So many websites you will visit, you will you will see that there is lazy loading. Lazy loading means when website uh, the image is being loaded, uh, it doesn't load in pixels, it loads in blur mode. So AMP has this thing inbuilt. When you include AMP images, the loading, this lazy loading happens automatically. Right, cool feature. Let me show you. If you don't believe me, you go to something like content.convey.com. Yeah, by the way, this is so fast that you cannot see. I don't blame you guys. Yeah, this is so fast. I want to see basically how can I see those videos? It's hard with this. No way, guys. This website is so fast, I'm not able to see it. Anyways, if I'll find it somewhere, I'll show you how this loading looks like. So after that, you would like to customize how your image looks. So there are different attributes that you can add, such as SRC for adding the source of this image file, then width and height, as the name suggests, to add the width and height to your image. And that's how you place an image into the website in form of an image. So this is a solution, ready-made solution that looks like. You may include your images from the CDN, add a width and height, and that's it. Uh, then if you want, you can arrange the everything like a normal div structure that you do. And that's it very happy. These are things. Yeah, and if you want to make things responsive, automatically changing according to the screen size or to the div size, you just need to add attributes like layout is equal to responsive. Now you don't need to remember these things because when you go to uh, app website and you search for any component, it gives you this attribute automatically when you go to the attribute section. Where is the attribute section? This is the attribute section. So we'll tell you about what what, what is the way to insert AMP. Like these are the attributes. SRC, SRC set, sizes, alt, attribution, height and width, data attribution, and all those things. You don't need to remember that. Okay. Cool. Then you have layout attribute that helps in much more different way, like fixed uh, size without responsiveness that you need. And if you want intrinsic, like you can go on and like check all these different layout mode, which changes according to different components. 
So ultimately, what it has to offer is that by just inserting this layout is equal to whatever responsive net attribute you want, it will automatically provide you responsiveness without writing a single line of media query. In it, guys, I'm, I'm damn sure about this. You don't need to write any media query for tablet or mobile or any other devices. Just need to write how you want it to look when it moves to another uh, screen sizes, and then it will automatically does the magic. Work. And uh, so finding the right component is like can be a regular game for you. So you just need to navigate to that component like I am PMG or I am YouTube. And uh, that's how you have to do that. I already showed you the example of how you can find the right component. Let me know in the comments. I will wait for like one 10 seconds or so if you have any question related to HAMP component. Okay, so you don't need to, need to learn any kind of uh, theory or anything like that to get started. Just go on to the amp.dev website and go to the documentation and you can learn for all these. So some good questions that you can ask uh, from the component. What does this component do? How do I use this component? How to customize this component? How, do, how can I style this component? How you can add your own custom JavaScript to it? How you can change the layout with different screen sizes. These are the normal questions you have with any HTML component, and these all applies with the same AMP components. So for these, whenever you go to the documentation, you have different attributes that are available that answers all these questions. Yeah, so uh, again, Harishab is asking what is the easiest way to convert existing website to make it AMP ready? So the easiest way to do that is uh, add the AMP boiler plate code that I said, that's the first way to do. Then open your AMP, uh, install the validator extension, AMP validator extension, and then one by one see the line that is having problem. It will also tell you how to solve that problem and just change the component from nor normal HTML component to AMP component. So this process might take like one day or two days, depending upon the length of your website. Uh, on an average, it just takes one or two days. And after that, you have done like this, you don't need to worry about performance at all. So I think this much effort is worth it. So uh, I was talking about app component, component documentation example. You can visit uh, this part and you can see all the documentation related things about a particular component. So we have description, we have behavior, we have attributes, we have styling, we have required script, and we have supported layout. These are all the things that the documentation include. When you visit our AMP documentation section, and this is consistent with all the components that AMP has to offer. Even if I go to something called as AMP add, you can just see that behavior, attributes, placeholder, no add available, things like that. These are again the attributes, styling, supported, how many, how many uh, different ad networks supports this AMP add component. Oh my God, these are so many. I didn't knew there were so many ad providers. And uh, then you want, if you want to add more, you can go to the Stack Overflow community and request for more support, or you can add a bugger feature also, like same with our components. So this is pretty much the way how you actually deal with components and how you add components to that part. So discovering new component, it's uh, pretty easy. Uh, you can follow the Twitter handle for our app, and they, whenever they release a new component, they always inform the community. And it's a very good way to do that. And then you don't need to remember them, guys. You just need to go to amp.dev and search for that component, and it will be just there. And most of the components are already there. So the next thing to do is uh, do amp by example. More most of the time, you want you don't want to do everything on your website, right? You just want to test it out. Uh, such as running C++ code in an online ID. Unfortunately, that's not possible with other JavaScript libraries you, because you need to set up your own node environment, run the website and all that. But with AMP, you can do. AMP has something called as AMP Playground that was created by the AMP team. And this is the most fun way of trying out any component that exists. So uh, it's mostly available with all of them. Let's go to uh something called as amp form and you see whenever there is a, a snippet code it says open this snippet in playground and when you click this this amp web website will take you to the amp playground and this is a visvib tool 
when you write it the, the instant you see it don't believe me i'll just change the name same it changes this is the easiest way guys it cannot be that uh, much easier than this and this is the way how you can test out any new component by just going to the snippet clicking on the playground and then seeing the thing working if you are satisfied with the things you can write your own css and things like that then only you need to copy paste and insert it to you and cool part is you can change in which website or which uh, resolution you want to see this thing at. there is a long list of different components which you can also see in the amp playground example even if you want to add a vimeo video for example you can go to amp vimeo playground and this will show you a live example of how you can insert your own amp vimeo video using the live code playground So in conclusion, this is the end, guys, and this is all about AMP. And congratulations, you have already covered. I won't say ten percent now; it's almost twenty percent. If you have understood this very well, you have covered twenty percent of the AMP about what AMP has to do and how you can create your own website. So this twenty percent is enough to go and create your own AMP website. I, I will like surely say you to go to your own personal blog or something and. Uh, try to create your convert your own existing website into an AMP website, or even just try to create a new AMP website. And uh, if you want me to review it, find me on GitHub using Common in Tech, and I would be very happy to review your PR and uh, see how you actually did that. So what we have learned, we found a new web framework uh, that is AMP, which helps you to create accessible, performant, SEO optimized, responsive, everything in just one framework that AMP has to offer. So then we also learned that every uh, AMP website starts with AMP boilerplate code. That is the AMP uh, bold emoji or AMP HTML AMP uh, tag that you have in the opening syntax. And then we also learned about AMP validator. That is the tool that you use in order to check if website is 100% AMP valid or not. And then we saw uh, AMP cache of how your website uh, is getting cached on Google server. An easy trick how google is helping you to save on cdn and keep your website fast then we saw how you can work with components of how you can include everything inside your website in form of components and then how you can go around documentation and how you can play with it so with that this is uh, this was all about amp and uh, congratulations in covering up 15 to 20 percent of amp and rest you just you can go to amp.dev to do that or you can go to our uh, platform where is our platform? Uh, Mobilweb.dev. Then uh, our website is also actually made from AMP stories. This is Instagram like stories, and we will cover about these stories also in our session that we are going to do in the crash course. You just need to go to mobileweb.dev and uh, enroll it. By the way, try to go and search mobile web dev on your mobile in Google search engine and see a magic of how Google caches AMP stories. This is very interesting. So you just need to go and fill out this type form and we'll be reviewing your uh, enrollment and we'll be enrolling you next Monday to uh, complete a certification course with us for AMP. Thank you guys. This was Aman. If you have any questions, can it be done with pages hosted on GitHub? Exactly it can be done because uh, AMP doesn't need any running environment. So you can just create a normal page and host it with GitHub. In fact, our AMP story is actually hosted on GitHub pages. You don't believe me i go to weaponizer show you that github pages is the thing that is being shown over here next question need me more Okay, Karthik, I think that's it. Um, nobody has any question. Hey, uh, can you share the uh, link again? For the mobile web dev? Yeah. So, sure. The crash course link. Uh, the crash course link. This one. I have sent it in the private chat. Yeah. Okay.
think we don't have any more questions. Mm -hmm. We can conclude the. Uh, Harsh or Karthik, do you have any questions, or what do you think about them? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I just I just love this uh, amp thing and I'm gonna try this thing right now like just after the session and like see how I can use those components in my current website and how I can migrate the current ones and uh, also like uh, just a question that how it would help uh, more in CEO, uh, SEO okay so basically, uh, you know, uh, the main reason for a bad SEO is because your website is slow many times. And uh, if web, uh, Google page ranking algorithm has something special zone and affection for fast loading website. So that is why if your website is loading within two seconds, that very that is very good for SEO. And it improves the results. And uh, in, in my statistics, it's not a like, written fact, but the thing that I have observed, if you transform your website into app, there are chances that your web results will up, uh, improve uh, by 10 ranks. So if your website was on 10th rank, if you make it an app, it will just go to the first rank. So this is how it actually improves the Google search results. Also, Aman, uh, we are building uh, a new product and I'm uh, implementing a PWF for that. Mm -hmm. So would okay. you recommend uh, I also implement AMP uh, into it? Yeah, so uh, late at some point, I actually did a project that was AMP PWA, and there is a dedicated section for that. You can go on Google, and there is a project that I also did on AMP PWA. Uh, let me try to find it if it's still visible. Uh, yeah. So this right now has error because because we haven't updated the website for a very long time. But this is a project that is AMP PWA. This website is made using AMP PWA at the same time. Okay. So the only problem that you will see that you when you are writing your service worker, which is the part for PWA, AMP would give you some problems with that. But there is something called as shadow uh, DOM, shadow loader. And there is a proper documentation on that also, how you can insert your own shadow DOM to include service worker. So what actually uh, it does is, uh, if I go to AMP PWA, there is a very nice video from uh, uh, this uh, uh, our uh, very own. I don't remember. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. This is like my favorite guy. Yeah. Paul Bacos, the guy who works uh, uh, and brings amazing things to them. So this this is the way how actually AMP and PWA works. So there is a, actually a slide that tells of uh, how AMP and PWA works. Yeah, this one. So what it actually does, AMP is very good at loading results on the first time. So what it does, it loads the results on the first time, but it doesn't load the service worker. Meanwhile, it has an async uh, JavaScript that is being loaded after the page has loaded. And then it prompts you to install the PWA. So it has the good of both the fast load of AMP and uh, stability of PWA. Okay, good. Got it. Yeah, so uh, now we can conclude the session. And looks like people really like the session. Thank you, Oman, for such a wonderful session you conducted i believe like this would help uh, and motivate a lot of developers and professionals to use amp and start building faster and better web pages so thank you all for taking out time of your busy schedules and goodbye see you soon yeah bye bye guys thank you for following thank you Oman. thank you